Praise the Lord. Well, what we know is if the Lord's good, then he's all good. The Bible says in him is no shadow of turning, no darkness of any kind. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that right? We thank God for that. Amen. Well, it's good to be, to be here this morning. We hope Pastor John's being refreshed. He and Sister Leslie. So we'll uh, look at a little thing that I've been dealing with. I'm preaching this this morning to me, mostly. These is some of the shortfalls that I've been finding in my own life. Now, when we get saved, we get saved by a sovereign act by God and our agreement. He said, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not of works least any man should boast, for we're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, and preordained by God to walk in his finished handiwork. The Bible says that he who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. So when you come to the Lord, no matter your background, if you agree to come to the Lord and you come to the Lord, he presents you spotless before the throne. But as we go along and grow in the Lord, we, we uh, start drifting away a little bit in our feelings. At least I did. When the Lord says that You've been made the righteousness of God in him. There shouldn't be any problems in here then, should there? But sometimes we, we get worldly. Television and, and uh, the Bible says the cares of this world and other things choke the word and make it non-effective in our life. So if we aren't careful, we start drifting a little bit in our feelings inside. So this is what this is about this morning. And... Uh, I'm, I'm going to feed off of it pretty good. <laughs> so we'll turn to Mark 11, and we'll get ready to have our lesson. While you're looking, I'll pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. We thank you for the anointing that's here, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that our hearts is open, that we're ready to receive your word. We know, Father God, that whatever you say about us is true. If we can come into agreement with it and not let the enemy take it from us, it belongs to us. And I thank you for it, Lord. That's what we look for this morning, Father. Revelation, that we can become more closer to you, Lord, that we might be able to bless others in Jesus' name. I know, in, a, in a church, if you're a pastor, that's what's on your heart, is blessing others. You want to you wanna be able to heal the sick? You want to be able to open the eyes of the blind? You want to be able to set the captives free? You want to do all those things. You want to be able to counsel those and comfort those that are confused and answer questions that, the, uh, that, that come up from time to time in the people's hearts? And that can all be done. That's God's promise that we can do those things. We know in this church, we've seen three different times, we've seen blind eyes be opened. People that were stone blind could see after being prayed for. We saw crippled people healed. We saw all kinds of things, all kinds of deliverances over the years. God's just as anxious to do that today as he was way back then. And that's what this message is about this morning for me. I, I have a desire to, to uh, be better in my end days than it was in the beginning. Because uh, we know that uh, one of the devil's things is he wants us to be worse in the end than we was in the beginning. Isn't that right? So, this morning we're going to look at Mark 11, and <clears throat> these are things that I run up against. Verse 22, 
We're going to start it. says, Jesus answering, said unto them, have faith in God. When I read that scripture, I got the revelation about having the faith in God that this is the God kind of faith. This is the kind of faith that he wants us to have. This is the kind of faith that he gave us. This belongs to us. And we're entitled to it. He says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Therefore I say unto you, What things wherever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, we've, we've heard many, many times that the Scripture, which we say it to one another, and you hear the pastor saying it all the time, all things are possible to them who believe. Isn't that right? Now, believing is possible for everybody, but it's also easier for some than others. I know people that uh, come in and got saved, man, they could believe, and they got wonderful things from the Lord. Lives changed, uh, their financial situations changed, their bodies changed, all kinds of things. They didn't do hardly anything. They just believed for it. But it's all, we're all able to believe. It may be harder for you to believe, but you're not out in the cold. You can believe. And there's things and ways in which you can be able to walk in the power of the Lord. Because that is the world's accusation against the church today, and not just our church, but any church, is the world says, where is your power? Isn't that right? Well, I'm going to tell you something. The power is alive and well in the church in Jesus' name. Amen. The blood never loses its power. The only thing that changes is we change. Worldliness comes into our life. We bring it into the church. The church gets a little worldly. And it seems like your power falls away. But it don't have to be that way. God has a remedy for it. It's one of the secrets of the family, and that's what we're going to be talking about this morning, is doing these things. Now, in verse 25 and verse 26, he says, But when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. <laughs> now, <clears throat> let me say here that he's not talking about uh, so much about forgiveness. He's using forgiveness and unforgiveness to teach us a lesson. And what he's talking about here is the condition of our heart. Where do we believe from? If a man shall believe in his heart the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead, that I shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with confession, salvation comes. Isn't that right? <clears throat> so we believe from our heart. Believing from your head is mental ascension. It means I agree, but when push comes to shove, we let it slip away. But God has answers for all of this. All right? Now, we'll turn to Matthew 12. This is all written in red. We know that's Jesus speaking. <clears throat> Either make the tree good and his fruit good, <clears throat> or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. What's he think he's, what do you think he's talking about there? He's talking about our hearts. He's talking about us. <clears throat> he says, verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now that word evil just means worldly. It means natural and worldly. Natural and worldly are things that are opposed to the things of God. 
You follow what I'm saying? <clears throat> said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words I shall be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. <clears throat> now, excuse me. What he's telling me in that scripture is that if this tree was good, then out of the good treasure, out of the good heart would come forth good things. I, I can't stand before God and say, <clears throat> Lord, you didn't do this for me. I didn't get this thing because he made it so. He made it so we could. That's the reason why he said, either make the tree good or his fruit good. Now, he tells us there in verse 36 and 37 that every out of word that we speak, we're going to be held accountable of in the day of judgment. For by thy words I shall be justified, by thy words I shall be condemned. So what's that tell us? The main culprit is what? My words. Isn't that right? You say, well, I, I don't deliberately go around saying bad things. No, we don't. But here's what I did. This is how I knew I was worldly. Here's what I did. When I got sick, I said, man, I'm sick. I'm so sick I'd have to get better to die. <laughs> I'd lay on the couch. My wife would say, you want me to pray for you? I'd say, no, don't. If you do, I'll have to get up. <laughs> I actually lived this when I'm telling you. This is how I was. And sometimes still am. But the Lord said, don't be that way. You follow what I'm saying? He made a, he made a way for us not to be that way, so we should be the way he said. All right? Let's look at the, I think it's 18, chapter 18. <clears throat> Then came, verse 21, Then came Peter to the Lord and said, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus answered unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but unto seventy times seven. That's 490 times. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king which would take account of his servants and when he gun to reckon... One was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and their children and all that he had so that that payment could be made. He owed 52, 52,800,000 what he owed. Now, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I'll pay you every penny. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and mercy and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred dollars, or forty-four dollars, a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told the boss, or told the Lord all what was done. Then the Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave you your debt, because you desired me, you did ask me to. Shouldest not thou have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Now, <clears throat> this is a sad story that I've got to tell you, but it's a true story. 
One time a fellow came to me. I know his word was about as good as the sand blowing across the ground. He said, I'd like to get $100 from you. I said, what for? He said, I need it. I said, well, what was your intentions about what are you going to do about it? You ain't working. He said, I got a check coming in a little bit. Be here any week. When I get that check, I'll pay you your $100. I said, all right. I got my pocket. I get out my money and I give him $100. About a month went by. Never seen the guy again. Didn't I expect that in the beginning? I saw one of his friends. I said, what happened to so-and-so? He said, man, he living her high on the hog. He bought this, he bought that, he did this, he did that. I said, he forgot old George. So one day I jumped on, I had a motorcycle in a Harley Davidson. I jumped on my old Harley and I rode out to his house. There he was out in front of the house and when he Come up to me, I grabbed him right by the shirt. <laughs> I was a preacher. <laughs> the Lord brought my mind right to that scripture. Well, I still had a hold of him, I let go of him. Now, Notice that in verse 27, the Lord said, I forgave him his debt. It was past tense. It wasn't the money that the guy was concerned about. He forgave him that. It's past tense. And he says on down here again in verse 32, he said, I forgave you all that you owed me. So it wasn't the money that the Lord put him, put him in prison over in the end. It was the condition of his heart. He failed to show mercy and compassion. That's what this is about this morning, the family secret. You want to know where the Garden of Eden is? It's right in here. It's right in here. So the thing is, it wasn't the $100 that was disturbing the Lord. It was my heart. Why, the Lord knew down the road somewhere I was going to meet somebody that wanted to get their eyes open. Wanted to get raised from the dead. Wanted to get healed. Wanted to get this or wanted to get that. And the, the preacher's expected to be able to help. The church is expected to be able to help. I've heard people say, if the church can't help me, who, who will? You follow what I'm saying? This is what the Lord is concerned about. He's concerned about our heart. You follow what I mean? He's not asking you to, to uh, do things that's too hard for you. He's just telling you that it's, imp it's possible for you to have a right heart. I used to have a right heart before these incidents happened that I told you about. I used to have a right heart. It slipped. Got too busy. Did too many things. Running a tree company, plus being pastor. Plus, I had a, a, a thing on the side where I gave people free furniture that needed it. I, I'd give them three rooms of furniture, bedroom, living room, and kitchen, and a TV. All those things, moving in for them free. Usually, with some poor old girl that her husband or boyfriend left her. She had one or two little kids and couldn't get no help. I'd set her up, get her in there. But see, what is that? that those things are good to do. But you've got to take care of yourself. If you get so busy, that the, what's the Bible say? The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, make it non-effective in your life. You don't realize it, but what's happening is your heart's changing a little in there. See what I'm saying? So now whenever you're in traffic and some guy cuts you off and you point up to the sky, you can say, uh-oh, that's not bad etiquette, that's a bad heart. Why, you want all four of his tires to blow out. Is that right? <laughs> 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 
Anyway, that's the way it works. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. If you receive Jesus as your Lord, he presented you spotless before the throne. You follow what I mean? He will keep you that way. If he can do what? Remain in your heart. You follow what I'm saying? When you become born again, there's something that the Lord wants. What he wants is your loyalty. He wants your loyalty, and he wants your sincerity. Isn't that right? So we get to the place to where we sort of get our loyalty fades a little bit towards God, and our sincerity drops away a little bit, and the little things that we used to take quick care of, now we don't take quick care of anymore. Doesn't the Bible say it's the small, the small fox that spoils the vine? Isn't that right? You watch certain things on TV that you shouldn't watch? You come into agreement? You watch this villain in the, on the TV? Get his drubbing, somebody knocks him down and shoots him or bangs him around, and you're saying, good, he deserved that. <laughs> That's the worldliness that creeps into your heart. Do you follow what I mean? So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you this morning. <laughs> How many of you know that it says in the book of Proverbs 4 and 23, it says, for us to protect our hearts, for out of it comes the issues of life. Protect your heart. Now, I, knew I didn't give that to you correct. I give it to you correct this time. Protect your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. Protect it with all diligence. So, watching certain things on TV, you should use a little diligence. Right, can you afford that? Muddying of the water? Can you afford that little bit of lack of loyalty? Can you afford that little bit of insincerity? If you don't get sick, if you don't get broke, if everybody around you is, is hunky-dory, that's an old word, <laughs> then it don't, probably, maybe it don't make no difference for a little while. But boy, I'm telling you, you let a little sickness knock on your door. Let a little poverty come clanging at your gate. Let your loved ones around you start needing things, whether it be healing or whatever, or marriage problems or whatever, and you'll be, you'll be wanting to hit your knees and say, Oh, God, I need you now to fix this. Only problem is all things are possible to him who believes. Now your believer's a little worn out. How to get a little worn out? TV wore it out. See what I mean? Yeah, you can watch TV, but you got to watch what's going into your head, what's going into your heart. Isn't that right? You got to watch how you act in traffic. <laughs> you got to be able to have mercy and compassion in your heart. Amen. You know, when I first got born again, you could ask me for anything. If it's possible, I'd give it to you. I really would. I'd try my best to get it for you. That's what got me into helping people with all that furniture and stuff. I wanted to do whatever I could do. I remember when I, when I got, in the beginning, I used to be a, the drunk of the town. That was my whole life was drinking and carrying on until I was 38. When I got saved, I said, Lord, what could I do? I knew I wanted to do something for the Lord. What could I do? I've had a terrible life. The Lord says to me, he said, he who has been forgiven much loves much. I said, well, who? The door's open. I said, who should I help? He said, well, if you, if you check your ministry, it's supposed to be out and down. You don't have to go up after the millionaire, the billionaire. Get the man beside you. Get the man out in front of you. Get somebody who come from where you come from. You follow what I'm saying? So we all have ability and a calling of God to do things. But we gotta we gotta watch our believer because if you don't if you don't, your believer is gonna get messed up. 
Now, Isaiah 55. This is a revelation from the Lord. And it's a prophecy by the Lord. We start at verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I knew that was true of me. I knew he, I knew he had better thoughts than I did. I, I've explained to you some of the thoughts I used to have. I knew his ways is better than my ways. But notice it said, saith the Lord. This is the Lord speaking. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts your way, or your thoughts. These things got important to me because I was making $107 a week. That was my paycheck when I got saved, $107 a week. I said, Lord, I need every penny I got. I went to church and got saved, and on the way out the door, somebody stuck $30 in my pocket, the shirt pocket. My wife would tell you. That's a fact. I said, these people are nuts. I'm going back. Maybe I'll get 100 <laughs> Now, I was fresh out of the world. I didn't know nothing. I just accepted Jesus on his terms and said, all right. I got saved standing in the bar. I didn't get saved in church. I told you that. But the thing about it is, it's true about the Lord when he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. Look at verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and turneth, returneth not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my house it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Now listen to that. There's a revelation from the Lord. He said, my words and my ways are good for planting in the ground. They, his words and his ways would make my $107 a week paycheck blossom into bigger money. Yeah. Why? So I could go to the races and do all this? And that? No. I didn't have any desire to do anything but be in the church and help the people of God. Do you follow what I'm saying? So I saw that there was ways in which I could become involved. My wife used to beg me to, to pay tithes. I said, nope. The preacher had a Cadillac and I had an old beat up Chevy or something. Nope, he got a better car than me. I ain't had buying into that. Why? My, I was still worldly thinking. I wasn't finished like you should be. But the more we, the more we uh, went to church and the more that we studied the Bible and the more that we tried to do the things of God, I said to her one day, I'm going to pay the tithes this week. She said, what are you going to do? Our cigarettes was $10 a piece. We each smoked, and there was a carton's end was $10 a carton. I heard later it was up to 100 Ain't that awful? <laughs> you can ask for what. I said, I don't know, but I'm going to take it in there. I, we're going to be in this church deal. If we're going to be a part of this, we're, we're going to do what we're supposed to do, and We'll let the chips fall where they may. Amen. So we went to church that morning, and I put my tithes in the offering. Come home, my wife said, what did you do? I said, I paid the tithes. She said, well, really, you returned the tithe because they belong to God. I said, all right, I returned the tithe. And God started to bless. Why was that? What, what had to happen for me to do that. I told you in the beginning I wouldn't do it. I was careful even the money I gave in the offering. Why? My heart wasn't right. 
I was born again. I didn't know the reality of having a right heart. But as the more we studied the Word and the more we went to church and the more we prayed, then we got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And guess what? Our hearts was right. Do you think that God wanted my $10 a week? He didn't want my $10 a week. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all the gold and silver anywhere in the world, in the universe. What did he want? My heart to be right. Why? He knew that someday I was going to lay hands on the sick and they were going to recover. Amen. He knew that someday I was going to counsel somebody about ready to blow their brains out with a 38. And the power and the anointing of God was going to be there to relieve them of that. And to save that soul from hell. That's what God was interested in, my heart. That's what he's interested in you about, your hearts. You say, well, I couldn't ever help him, but yes, you can. It might be the next door lady or the, the milkman that delivers the milk or somebody. Somewhere along the line, God will be using you. He don't waste it. He'll, he'll use you. Isn't that right? Okay, <clears throat> now. Let's look at, well, you don't have to turn if you don't want to. I'll just tell it to you. John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. No wonder that the Bible said the Word coming down could be planted and bring forth fruit. Isn't that right? I needed to know that the Word had power. I needed to learn that the Word had power. If he would have read on over in verse 14, it said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. We beheld his glory. When I saw that, that the Word was made flesh, I said, Man, if the Word can be made flesh, he, he can fix people. He can get people healed. He can get people delivered. He can set the captives free. If the Word, I already know that the Word was made flesh. How do I know that? Jesus showed up on the earth. It became a reality in me. I believe that, that he came and died for the sins of the world, and after three days, God raised him from the dead. I believe that. There, there hasn't, from the time I got saved until this very day, there's never a day when I didn't believe that Jesus was the living Christ. Never. Amen. There's other areas of my heart that needed going over, but that never left my heart. If I would have died anywhere along the way, I would have went to heaven. Isn't that right? Yes, but what would have happened when I'd have stood in heaven? When it come time for to give out the crowns, when it come time for the rewards done in these bodies after we're saved, I'd had shortcomings. Isn't that right? I couldn't have done much for the Lord. Do you understand what I mean? All right. Now I want to go to another Matthew seven. That's Matthew 6. Matthew 7, verse 9. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asked you for some bread, would you give him a stone? Or if he asked you for a fish, would you instead give him a serpent? If you then, being natural and worldly, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them? For this is the law and the prophets. Now listen to what he's saying there. The reality of the word will get by you and slip away except where you make it a reality in your life. You follow what I'm saying? 
He said, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men would do to you, do even so you do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. I started taking care of people. Started loving people. Started helping everywhere I could. Comforting wherever I could comfort. If there's a way to help you, I would help you. Sometimes I couldn't help you. But sometimes I could help you, and where I could, I did. Along the way come a man who was a doctor, had plenty of money. Didn't even confess himself to be a, much of a Christian at this time. He, he, his, his testimony was, and was even to the day he died, he didn't do this for God. Because he wasn't hooked up to God like that. But he said to me, he said, I see the way you do these trees. A guy like you ought to be in business for yourself. I said, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the elephant had wings, they could fly too. <laughs> he said, well, I talked to her with my wife, and we, we, we have a desire. We'd put you in business if you wanted to be in business, help you out. He knew I was only making a hundred and some dollars a week then. I'd been there working for that company at that time almost 25 years. I said, I'll think about it. I'll talk to my wife. I went home and told my wife. I said, Dr. Kirkpatrick said he wanted to put us in business. She said, what'd you tell him? I said, I told him I'd think about it. Why? I had a hold of the fact that God was doing things inside me. Then my heart was different now. It wasn't like it used to be. I didn't want to take any threat to that. You follow on me? I said, I told him I'm going to think about it and pray about it. She said, how long? I said, however long it takes. I did it for a full year. I never gave him an answer. I said to my wife, I said, if God really wants me in this, that man will ask me again. Now that's putting... What do they call it? A fleece out there. That was probably the good thing to do. But I did it. That's where my knowledge was at the time. One day I went up to trim his trees. He asked me again. He said, you thought any more about it? I said, yes, I did. He said, what do you think? I said, I told my wife that if you asked me one more time, I was going to do it. He grabbed his paycheck or his checkbook Took me and another guy, we went to an auction, and he spent $132,000. Now, remind you, this is, a, this is a human being in Franklin County. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what that did to the inside of my heart? I started to become a believer. I mean, a big believer. I wasn't scared of nothing. If you had a problem, I was going to fix it. I had a fixer. Amen. Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, the more you do unto others as you would have done unto you, you learn the power of the word and you learn the power of the blood of Jesus. The first place you learn that is in your own heart, in your own life. You understand what I mean? You come to the word, you come to church and Pastor John feeds you good food and, 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 and encourages you to do the right thing. Still, it's all in your ballpark. You can walk out of this thing and it's just like water running off a duck's back. But the word can make a difference in your life. And if it makes a difference in your life, it can say to you, you know what? Here's a way where it seemed not to be a way. Here's somebody, I, in my case, I didn't think anybody wanted me but my wife and kids to begin with. I grew up in a family that was very, very dysfunctional. My daddy was a drunkard and mean. And it, it was an awful way to grow up. But I can tell you this, that once I saw that the word was true, that came and could be planted into the ground and bring forth fruit like he said in Isaiah. I saw that that was true. I saw that the word worked. 
I got the idea that this blood of Jesus was over my heart, was over your heart. What's any difference between my heart and your heart? None if the blood of Jesus is over. Amen. You have the ability to want to be right and to do right. And somebody comes along and needs a little hand, maybe you can't even afford it, but you'll say, you know what, I'm going to help this person. Why? Something in you tells you that's God in you working. Amen. There are scriptures we're probably not going to get to, it says the grace and peace are multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace are multiplied. What, what is grace? Grace is God's willingness to work for you for any reason. That's grace. He'll answer your prayers not based on your worth, but based on the blood of Jesus and, and the authority of the name of Jesus and based on his love for you. Isn't that right? So you can see those things are possible. You can have your heart changed. Does it have to be a big deal? No. It can be like me a little bit at a time. Nobody bugged me to give my tithes, to return my tithes. Nobody bugged me to that. My wife asked me about it maybe once. I said no. But my heart was wrong. As soon as my heart started growing and getting right, I started wanting to do the things of God. Guys used to pull up in my house and blow the horn. Come on, Poe, we've got a case of beer in the truck. We're going to Shepherd's Bird. Nope. What? You mean you're turning down a chance to go drink? I said, go on. I'm not going. Why? My heart was different. My wife didn't have to follow me around with a strict and say, don't you go there, don't you go that. My heart, Lord had a chain on my heart. But the reality was I was seeing the power of the Word of God and how it could be worked. I saw that when the Bible talks about the spoken Word, it said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. It's a true thing. It don't say out of the meagerness of the heart. It says out of the abundance of the heart. Once I started doing the Word of God and seeing that the Word of God was true and letting the Word of God cleanse my heart and purify my heart and purify my soul, I started to see this, this is real. You follow what I'm saying? Now when I talked and somebody would say they had a problem, I'd say, man, I can help you. I know I can help you. Why did I know that? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You follow what I'm saying? Somebody come in, pastor, said, I'm sick. You think you could get me some help from the Lord? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can. I'd pray for him and get him help. How? Because my heart is, is multiplied. The knowledge of God had multiplied and purified my heart. All that was in me was good and was doing right. You follow what I'm saying? Did you learn anything this morning? Amen. I want to stop there because it's about time, I think. My wife warned me not to go over time. So. <laughs> so before we go, I want to say one thing. <clears throat> we have people come up here to the front of the church every church service that they're here. They come up here there are a group of believers that pray and can counsel you in the Word. I'm going to ask them to get up and start coming up. They're here for you. You don't have to use them, but they're here. They can get you forgiveness of sin. They can get you healed. They can start working on your problems with you. Remember this. When you leave and go home today, all this next week, they'll be praying for you. Amen. It might be what keeps you out of jail. Well, I mean, push comes to shove. You might fly through the intersection. Come on up. You might fly through the intersection and they take a picture of your license plate. They got me like that over in Hagerstown. 
How do you know that the Holy Spirit, because of their prayers, won't say, now slow down in this here, Jonah, might have a camera up. <laughs> if you want to get saved, church is a good place. I got saved standing in the bar. But the Lord told me explicitly, standing in the bar, the Holy Spirit said this to me. Now, I want you to get out of here, and I want you to go to church. And when you get to church and the pastor gives the altar call, I want you to go up and have a church pray for you for salvation. I said, well, I'm already saved. He said, I want you to do this for me. So when I, the pastor gave an altar call, I got up and went up, and, and the, the pastor prayed for me. What did the Lord want? He wanted that pastor's heart to get that blessing. You follow what I'm saying? So if you're here today and you need somebody to help you get saved, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, today's the day you can do it. If you need prayed for for healing, for anything in your body, these people will pray for you. The anointing is here. And it's strong. They know the Word works. They know. Their hearts have been purified by not only reading the Word and coming to church, but by doing the Word. Reading the Word is one thing. It ain't the full blessing. You read the Word and do the Word, you get the full blessing. You purify your soul. You follow what I'm saying? So I'm going to pray a prayer and dismiss you, and, and you can go home for your dinner. But if there's anybody in here that needs a prayer, you come up and let these people pray for you. It can be anything. They won't repeat it to anybody. You don't have to be all of them. You can pick any one of them out that you feel more comfortable with. They have the anointing to get the answer to your prayer. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Okay, let's all rise. Father, thank you for your blessing today. Thank you, Lord God, for the Sunday school teachers. Thank you for those that led the church in the beginning, Lord, the praise and worship leaders, Father God. Thank you for the wonderful anointing that the pastor left here in this church and here in this altar. Thank you, Father God, for being with the pastor. Lord, we're here and they're wherever they are, but Father God, we're with them anyhow. And we'll pray for them, Lord God, and keep them lifted up, Father. That they'll come back full, Father God, and raring to go in Jesus' name. Now, Father God, we thank you for each and every person here. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for opening the eyes of the blind. Thank you, Lord, for setting the captives free. Most of all, Father God, thank you for the word that multiplies in our heart, Lord, that we can see and understand your grace and how w wonderful you are towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You're dismissed, and you can come up and get prayer if you need.